Thank you for attending, everybody. My name is Chris Zukowski, um, and thank you so much to Elgin for hosting me. And I really appreciate the the opportunity here and the and the program you put together sounds really really cool. All right, so um, I called this talk. This is a new one that I'm doing for this year called uh, the Marketing Ladder on Steam. And there's this weird thing because I I do a lot of these, and I, I got hired one time by this investment group, and they just said. Chris, how do we get to the front page of Steam? That's all they wanted to know. They're like, we want to get to the front page of Steam. Because if you do this stuff like Steam Next Fest, which we just had last week with Steam Next Fest, they have these widgets on the front of the Next Fest. Um, and there's only about 10, 12, depending on, on where you look at it, 12 games on the front page of Steam right here. And it's like most popular, most wish listed, big games, always on the front page. And the games that get here, they earn like 65,000 wish lists to 100,000 in a single week. That's what these type of games that are on the front page. But you have to be the most wish listed to get up there, which is weird because like if you look at the because I do surveys, it's part of what I do to see all the games that got into these events like what they earn. So each blue bar is a different game. And if you look the, these games in my survey, these aren't all the games because I can only get so many people to share their data with me. But these games, they got like 65,000 wish lists during this one week, that this game. And then you'll see the games that kind of get featured up here. These are the ones that get 65,000, this most wish listed. The games that get about 5,000 wish lists are in these widgets. There's like special widgets, kind of like not at the top, but kind of in the middle. They're kind of specialized. They're kind of in this range here, this kind of range right here. They usually get about 5,000 to 3,000 right here. And then if you're not featured, you don't get anything. You kind of get about 700 wish lists that week if you're in the next fest. That's all these games right down here. Okay. So that is what it looks like. And it kind of seems weird. Um, I've done I've done analysis and to get into this front page featured section, you have to have about 100,000 wish lists going into the festival before they let you on there because it's ranked. And so it's about 100,000 to get there. And the 100,000 games get 60,000 wish lists. It's weird, right? <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, you have to have a lot of wish lists to get a lot of wish lists. And it's this weird spiral. I mean, it's like, why I have to have a lot to get a lot. Like, how, how, how do you get in on this? How do you, how do you even get into the spiral so that you can do it? Like, what, how do you get a lot of wish lists so that I can do this? So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today because it's weird. It just doesn't make any sense. And this is the most frustrating thing about Steam. Okay. And so that's all I'm going to talk about today. Um, this is me. Uh, I, write a lot about video games, which gets me covered by like game industry biz, vice waypoint, game developer. I consult for indies. People hire me, uh, publishers hire me, Steam, uh, you know, like people publishing games on Steam individually, like single developers, they hire me and I teach them how to use Steam and that sort of stuff. And I do this through my website, howtomarketagame.com slash free. I have a newsletter every month. I publish four articles, basically once a week, I'll publish an article. And I just write about um, different things on Steam, different studies, different games that may have won, uh, done well and what they did to get there. So it's a free newsletter. So you can sign up there. And then every week you'll get updates from me about the newest things happening on Steam. So that's my weekly blog. But anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, so I call this the ladder, okay? And it takes several little steps to get up to this ladder rung, which I call Steam featuring. You know how I said you kind of have to have 100,000 wish lists before you get into this thing? This is like Steam featuring. That's what I call Steam featuring. So what I'm going to do in this talk is show you the steps that you take to slowly get up here so that you have enough to get that featuring. Because this is what happens. This is how you make money on Steam. This is how you actually like do okay on Steam. All right. So this is the way the basic structure of the talk. Um, you'll see it here. Um, we're just gonna pull this up. Let me let me go back one real quick. Okay. So if you look, Steam curation is the top. That's that's really that is that is the ultimate. But to get there, there's several kind of sub steps. There's initial attention, and I'll talk about that. Continued growth, curated exposure, 
Steam featuring, launch, and then Steam curation. These are the basic steps to get all the way up to the Steam featuring and then eventually Steam curation, which means your game made a lot of money to get that curation. Okay, so let's talk about initial attention. This is the first on-ramp to get the basics of visibility, all right? Every game starts with zero wish lists on Steam. The second you put your game up, everybody, whether you're EA, Devolver, published game, whatever, everybody starts at zero. So what happens? That initial attention is the first spark. And it's, you gotta, your game has to have something I call the magic. <laughs> it's kind of undefinable. Just some games have it and some games don't. Let me describe. Like, you all know this game, Untitled Goose Game. It's just like, you just see this and you're like, I gotta try this game. <laughs> like, what is this? Uh, this game just kind of came out a squirrel with a gun. I've seen this a lot on social media. You just see this game, you're like, what the heck is this? I gotta learn more about this game. This game, Choo Choo Charles. Again, this game did really well. They got like hundreds of thousands of wish lists without even being featured by Steam yet. Lots of stuff. These games have what I call the magic, where you just see it and you're like, I gotta try that game. That is something, okay? And I've broken it up. There's you know, there's those games are funny. Like you see a screenshot and you're like, oh, that's funny. I got to try that. But there's other games. There's other avenues. And I've basically broken it down into six possible ways of earning what I call the magic. OK. And what I mean by the magic is I've marketed a lot of games. Like a lot of people hire me to help. And some games you don't even have to work. Like my job is like so easy when the game has the magic. Like we don't do anything. I'll just like email a streamer and say, like, do you want to try this game? The streamer says, yes, I do. And they play it. That's it. Um, sometimes I uh, just like send it to, you know, they'll send it to like a festival. Festival lets them in. No problem. And then other games that don't quite have the magic. Every single thing is so impossible. It is so hard to get some games visibility. So there's six different ways to get the magic. Okay, I'm going to go through them. An incredibly beautiful game a high concept game, a hilarious sandbox game, amazing addicting gameplay, infinitely deep game, underserved audience. These are six potential ways. It doesn't always have to be like a silly game, which I call high concept or a beautiful game. Even if you don't have like a great artist on your team, there's other avenues to have a game that has the magic. But I find the games that do have it usually do one, sometimes two of these, but they're typically one of these six, okay? And now you'll notice this gap here. I break it down into two halves. There are games when you just see it with a screenshot or you just see a tweet that just says this thing and you're like, I gotta try that game, which is like those first games that I showed you. The other ones are playing is believing. Like they don't look amazing. It's not like when you first see it, but as soon as you start playing the game, you're like, this is the most fun game I've ever played. I gotta play 40 hours of this game and not go to sleep. Those are the two different, I, I would say types are this. You see what screenshot and seeing is believing and playing is believing. I'm gonna go through some examples. So you kind of get a concept of what I mean by this. So incredibly beautiful graphics. We all know this, like as soon as you see a screenshot of some of these this is blasphemous. Like, God, that game looks just so interesting. Even though it's, you know, 2D pixel art, most people like 3D, but 2D pixel art can work. Cause you're just like, what is going on here? Look at the, what? I gotta play this game these type of games with incredibly beautiful graphics. And I don't just mean like your game has to look good. It has to be like amazing graphics that have never been seen before. Weird art that is like mind boggling. Uh, the next one is a high concept game. These are the games you see a screenshot and you hear what's going on and you're like, that is amazing. This is Boyfriend Dungeon is a perfect example of this. It's a game where you first have to date your weapons, and then you take them into a dungeon and fight monsters with your boyfriend weapon. It's like a crazy concept, but as soon as you hear it, you're like, I don't know what is up with that game, but I got to try it. It's just the concept by itself is enough to propel it forward. Another one I call Hilarious Sandbox is like tabs, where the game is just kind of like all these silly things happening where you just throw them together and you just push the play button and it just weird gifts come out of it. You know, and it just looks funny. Another game like this is, um, is uh, it just escapes me real quick. Um, um, you, you know, the, the, the Half-Life 2 game, Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod is another example of this, where it's just like 
just weird things and just throw it together and just magic happens. That's a hilarious sandbox because you can just show a gif of this happening. And people are like, I got to try this game. What is going on? Why is there a woolly mammoth going sideways here? Um, that's why these are like all with a screenshot. So the way you go viral with these is you tweet about it. You put it in TikTok, a Reddit post, a trailer. You just show the game off and people are like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying that game. That's, that's an amazing game. You can't fake this. Your game either has it or it doesn't. And I see a lot of people like, oh man, should I use this hashtag or not? If you have one of these games, it doesn't matter. You just tweet about it. You put it on TikTok, it takes off. Um, I find people spend way too long trying to game the system. And if their game doesn't have one of these three things on social media, it just doesn't take off, okay? Um, these are, I, I did, I, I do surveys all the time. And one thing I did was I studied where wish lists come from, like what causes the most wish lists. The top ones were festivals, TikTok, streamers, Reddit, press, imager, which doesn't really work anymore, and Twitter. Okay. Twitter is very low. You'll notice most games don't do very well with Twitter. But if you have one of those hilarious games where you just show a screenshot, it does do pretty well. Same thing with TikTok. TikTok can get you a ton of wish lists, but you'll see that. There's lots of games that just don't even mark on this graph. Those are games that don't have the magic. They just don't have it. So people try it, they try Twitter, and it doesn't work for them. It's because their game doesn't, doesn't have that, that visual or funny concept that makes people go, oh my God, I gotta watch that. Um, I gotta try that game. Reddit is another one. You'll notice there's a big gap because these bars are so small, they don't even show up. That's Reddit. These games that do well, thousands and thousands of wish lists. In fact, I'm going to show you an example right here. This is a game called Lacera Summit Kingdom. I mean, I don't, I don't know why I wrote incredible. Well, this is this game satisfies condition number one, which is incredibly beautiful graphics. Like, I don't have to tell you this game is beautiful. Like, you look at this game, you're like, this is amazing. This game is a city builder built on the side of a mountain. And it is just beautiful. Like, you can zoom around it and stuff like you just tweet an image like this and like, this is a game we're making. That game's going to go viral on Twitter, okay? And this is basically what they did. They posted on r slash gaming, which is a Reddit, very popular gaming subreddit. And within a day, they had 73,000 upvotes and 11,000 wish lists. Now, if you read their post, this is their post. Just search it. You can find it. Uh, this went live last year. All they did was post a trailer and text that says like, we're making this silly game about uh, building a, a game on the side of a mountain, and it went viral on Reddit and got them 11,000 wish lists. Okay. There's no secret text or secret word or secret thing they did. A lot of people ask, like, how do I do Reddit? How do I do Reddit? Step one is make an amazingly beautiful game and then talk about it. Like Reddit loves 3D games. If you're making a 3D game that looks amazing, you can do well on Reddit. It, it's the game. You have to have the game first. There's no secret message they hid in here that makes it work or certain secret time they posted. People always ask me, what time do I post to Reddit? I don't know. You post when you've got a good game. That's the best time. The best time to post to Reddit is when you have an awesome game. And then you go viral from there. That's, that's the secret to Reddit, is have a, an amazing looking game. And this is what I mean by, if your game has the magic, Reddit works for you. You just post a trailer and a message and it'll go viral. That's the secret. A lot of people say like, I posted to Reddit and the mods pulled my game. Yep, that's what happens. It's because your game didn't have the magic. And this game has the magic. And so people are like, uh, the mods are like, yeah, the game actually sounds pretty cool. I'm not gonna pull this. That's the secret to Reddit. Okay. I, I hate to say it, but that's that's the secret. Okay. Now, the other half. Now, let's say you're maybe you're a coder and your art isn't as great. You have programmer art, or maybe it's just not great. Um, let me show you exactly what I mean by this. There's other ways to kind of go uh, somewhat viral on Reddit, if I could say. All right. And that's um, what I call just having great gameplay. So here's one amazing, addicting gameplay. We know this game, right? <laughs> It's Vampire Survivors. Uh, there's another one. Oh, well, let me go. Let me just put a finer point on that Vampire Survivors thing. Let me let me go back. We all know Vampire Survivors. You know, went viral millions and millions. Of I think it's like the number two most Steam Deck played game. Um, you you look at this game and you're like, what is this a joke? Why does this game look like this? And it does. Like this game will not go viral on Twitter. If you were to before anybody knew about this game, if you just tweeted this image, they would ignore it. 
It doesn't, it, the graphics aren't the reason this game did so well. It's because as soon as you play it, you're like, what the hell is this game? I can't stop playing. I'm not going to bed tonight. That's what happens with a game like this, okay? <laughs> that's what it is, all right? Um, you just have to have a fun game. That's, that's it, that's a secret to life, have a fun game. Um, another one uh, is what I call infinitely deep gameplay. This game, just I just wrote a blog post about this. You can find it on my website, Cosmoteer. This game simulates building a spaceship and it is so detailed deep, people can play it for hundreds of hours. In fact, this guy, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, he just put the game up for free, like on itch and on his website for free, the whole game. And people, this was like eight years ago. He just put the game up for free and people played it and played it. And he still sold millions of dollars worth of this game just because it's such a fun concept. Like people love on Steam, infinitely deep gameplay. So the graphics aren't amazing. Like, and there's no dig at this guy. It looks fine. But the fun part about this game is that you get to build like, you know, thrusters and like you tell where your people go. It's like so deep. It's so deep. And then another one I like to say is what I call underserved audience, which is Stardew Valley. Basically, nobody was making good Harvest Moon games and there's a huge Harvest Moon audience. And so this guy just said, I love Harvest Moon. I'm going to make this. And there was a whole audience that loved the old Harvest Moon games, but nobody's making games. So he served them and they're like, great, I'm just going to play this game. And so you know, this game if by, the, by itself, if you tweeted it, ah, it's not going to do very well. But if there's an audience that's hungry, that hasn't been getting games in a while, you can give that, them those games and do well. So here's how to succeed on this. Okay, with these playing is believing, you don't typically go viral on Twitter. You just don't. You tweet about your game and people are like, okay, it just looks like a bunch of boxes. I don't know. You got to get that demo out. It doesn't, it's not until people play it, until they have their game, their hands on it, that they usually feel that this game is amazing, that it has the magic. And that's why I recommend, if you're trying for one of these strategies, if your game falls under one of these categories, get a demo out or a free version of your game as soon as possible and send it to streamers. Because when a streamer plays it, they're like, this game's amazing. Then they stream it. And then people say, oh, my favorite streamer is having a good time. Now I want that game. That's how you succeed in this category. Here's a real life example. This game's called Dome Keeper, recently released just in last year. I mean, the graphics are, are decent. I, I don't mean to say they're bad, but when you see a screenshot like this, you're like, okay, it's like some sort of maze game. I don't know, but it's actually this mining, roguelike, shooting, it's like, it, you just gotta play it. I can't even describe it, it doesn't sound that great. But when you play it, it is so addicting. This guy, when he launched it, made a million dollars in his first week and he got 188 180,000 wish lists by launch okay that's what he launched with huge but if you look at it you're like oh so so what what's the deal with this game it has to be so fun to play and so let me show you what happened and how he got to where he did like he actually the 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 creator of it if you look at his follower chart followers are very close to to wish lists for a long time, he put up his Steam page up here and he was marketing it, tweeting about it, but he was, you know, like I said, the graphics aren't like, oh my God. And so they were flat. And then he launched a demo of his game right about here. Streamers picked it up and the game took off. That's right here. You can see, right? You can guess. I don't even need to put that arrow. You know when the demo launched, it's right about there. And here's what happened is he gave it to some streamers, put the demo out. And these streamers played it back to back. Look how many, look at the dates. I put the dates when they streamed it. Like, cause streamers watch each other and they're like, oh my God, that game looks so fun. Let me try it. Oh, oh, look at how many streamers played this game within a month of the game's demo going out. This is his actual wish list chart for the, for the streamers. Like one streamer played it and he got 2,700 wish lists in a day from that one streamer. And then other streamers found it. And then other streamers found it. And then other streamers found it. All of this. He got 40,000 wish lists in one month because he has a game that you only realize the value once you play it. Okay. And that's why having a demo out helped. I'm, I'm here to tell you for whatever one, whether you do one through six, a beautiful game or a game that's so fun to play, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of marketing you do. 90% of your game success is the game's itself like your game has to be beautiful or it has to be fun to play i mean preferably both but you can do either one 
it's just the game. There's no trick. <laughs> this marketing stuff, I can't, I can't convince somebody to like a game if they don't like it. That's the whole secret to marketing. We're not brainwashers. You have to have a good game. <laughs> like that's that's the secret. Okay. So let me when I say good game, let me let me show you what I mean. Okay, so what last year. 2022, I went through every game. Well, I did it in January of this year. I went back to 2022 and I looked at every game that got a thousand reviews because that kind of indicates when you get a thousand that a lot of people like this game, like this game hits. And I graphed, I said, I picked the genre for each of those 11 games. I looked at all of them and I just graphed them to see what the genres that were most played in 2022 are. That's what this graph shows. And you'll see. Here's a, it's real small, but this is the graph. You'll see some genres. This is the number of games that reach that top level. So here, there are about 32 horror games. That's what this first bar, 32 horror games made it to the top of the charts last year. And then I just did indie games. I filtered out AAA games. I filtered out the AAAs. 32 horror games. The next one was shooters. And that was first person shooters and kind of like third person shooters. I just combined anything that had a gun. So um, horror and shooters are top, then RPG, then survivor likes or simulation, sorry, simulation, and then um, sexually explicit games. But those are like the top five games. Management was up there. Those are the top genres. Love, they love those games. And I kind of just kind of say like, that's the best ones. The ones at the very bottom. now. I should say, we're only looking at the top winners. And basically, some of them are uh, Match 3, Immersive Sim, Mech, Open World, Run and Gun, Tower Defense. That's the ones at the bottom. Now, that means only one Tower Defense made it to the top of the charts last year. Only one. Only one Immersive Sim made it to the top of the charts. That's, that's kind of what this graph is showing you, that there are genres that players on Steam just can't get enough of, like horror. They just, they just love them. They love horror games. So in general, I, I do this math all the time. Like I always look at what are the top sellers on Steam. Here are the genres that Steam loves. When I say fun gameplay and Steam players just can't get enough of, these are the genres. 4X, Farming Sim, City Builder, Management, Shooter, Deck Building, Metroidvania, Simulation, Building, RPG, Visual Novel, Roguelike Horror. In general, when I see a game that's one of these genres, I'm like, okay, there's a good shot. This game will do well on Steam, these genres. It really matters what type of game you make. In general, these are the very hard to sell on Steam. These games are hard to sell on Steam. When somebody comes to me and they say, Chris, I'd like to hire you to market your game, um, to help me market my game. And I see the genre, I'm like, oh, okay. This is gonna be a hard one. This is gonna be very hard to do. It's typically these genres, VR, tower defense, puzzle games. A lot of indies make puzzle games, a lot, but they just don't do well on Steam. Platformers, like 2D platformers, 3D platformers, it doesn't matter, just the jumping, trying to land on stuff. RTS, multiplayer games in general, party games, you know, like um, Fall Guys type of thing. Even though Fall Guys is huge, that's one of the hard ones to actually do is party games. Shmups, like shmoot em ups, like space games where you fly around and, and just try and shoot asteroids and stuff and also like enemies coming at you in waves and then beat em ups, you know, like a 2D old beat em up type of games. These games are hard to market. The Steam shoppers really don't like them that much. Usually the games that do well here have extremely good graphics, like unbelievably good graphics. It is very hard to sell these genres if your graphics aren't just like amazing, amazing. It, very few games will do well in this genre. These are the ones that like one or two were the top of the charts last year. Very hard. Okay. A lot of people come to me and they'll say, like, Chris, does my game have the magic? I don't know. I can't tell you that. I, I just don't know. That's not my job. I don't know how. I can't, I honestly, I've been in this for years. I can't look at a game and say, like, this is it. Other than the genre, I'll say, maybe you got it. You just have to let the market decide. You have to show a bunch of people and say, like, are you into this? Like, not your friends or your mom. She's going to say, I love you, honey. Yes, your game's great. You need to show it to random Steam people. Does your tweet get a thousand, uh, you know, like um, when you tweet, do you get a thousand wish lists? Don't mean a bunch of retweets and like thumbs up or likes or whatever. Does it turn into actual wish lists? 
When you post on Reddit, do you get 73,000 upvotes? Do your TikToks go viral? These are the signs if your game has the magic. That's the indicator. I can't tell you that. We just have to test it. Um, here's another thing. When you put your game's demo out, is your median play time 25 minutes or greater? I find the games that have that, you know how I said it's only fun when they get their hands on it. Those type of games usually have median play times greater than 25 minutes, okay? Do streamers play your game over and over and over? I mean the same streamer. And I've seen this for these sandboxy games. The same streamer will play a demo every week. It's amazing. That means your game has the magic, okay? That's why I spent so much time on this initial attention. If you don't have that initial attention, like this, this rung doesn't exist, they'll never get past this. This is, the, this is it. People think, they think about, oh, I couldn't get my tweets to go viral or this or that. They blame all these other things. It's the game. If your game is not the magic, you can't do the rest of these. It's just impossible. And most games I see do not get past this first step, okay? Basically what happens is if your game has the magic, this initial attention, it'll either, it'll, and you play your cards right, then it'll go up to the front page. If it doesn't, if it's, most people are like, I'm like, oh, the game looks pretty good. Do you want to try it? Ah, oh, no, it's okay. I got a, I got a thing to do. That's a sign that your game doesn't have the magic. And typically what happens is you'll try really hard, but you'll end up when your game's ready to launch at like 5,000, maybe, maybe 10,000 wish list somewhere in there. And then maybe at the top earn about 150,000. That's just, I, I see this all the time. That's typically what happens. But if your game has the magic, you're going front page, all this stuff, that's, that's really what happens. So here's typically way people market their games. They um, do a whole bunch of pre-production, maybe do some early coding and stuff. They put their Steam page up and then they're still doing production while their Steam page is up. And then they post a demo and then they go, they launch, they go to sale. Okay, this is typically how things have always been done. But what I'm seeing is there's a new generation of games. And what they do is they pull this backwards. They pull all this stuff backwards. So you do pre-production and you get your Steam page coming soon page created really early, much earlier than you think. And then you post your demo much earlier. See, most people post it right before they launch. Uh-uh-uh. The successful games nowadays are putting their demo out way before, much earlier. Okay. And then they do a lot of marketing. They collect wish lists. They get momentum through streamers. They have this long period where their game is public and they do a long production and then they put their game out for sale. This is the new trend is to really pull this stuff back further. Okay. So that you get more time to get that exposure. And the other thing that they do by getting your demo back earlier, you can get that sense of whether your game is fun or not. And a lot of people will see like, Oh, um, I'm not getting 25 minutes play time, which Chris said indicates that my game has the magic. Maybe they only have like 10 minutes of median play time. And they're like, okay, let's focus on gameplay. So they post their demo and then they change the game. They modify it. They make it easier or harder. And then they update the demo and they get more feedback. And people are like, oh no, you made it too hard. That's not good. And so then they fix it and they improve the you know, playability of the game. And then by the time they're ready to launch, their game is like cooking. Like it is, it feels good. Like all those little bugs, all that design issues are worked out. It's fun. That, that is what's going on. So when you have a game that has the magic, you can do this kind of what I call continued growth. Basically you exist on Steam, your game has the magic. And I'll be honest, if you go viral, like I, I talked about that Lacera Kingdom, even though they went viral, they got 11,000 wish lists. That's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, like 1,000 to 1,200. Those initial sparks, they're not a lot. They just indicate that people are excited about you. You still got a long way to go. You cannot do very well on Steam even if you get just 12,000 wish lists. You have to do this continued growth. This is what Domekeeper did. See, Domekeeper, they did well. And they, they spent almost a year just building wish lists because they had the magic. They had their demo out. People were playing it. So they just had to put it out there and grow, 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 grow. That's, that's the real marketing. So example, okay, when your game has the magic, you've had that viral moment, Steam just kind of promotes you. They figure out that your game has the magic. I don't know how they do it. And then they just kind of start promoting you. This is, I did a survey of, of hundreds of games. They sent me their data. Each bar is a different game. You'll notice this graph shows visits per week. This is just on a regular week, how much traffic does Steam send these games? 
They, they didn't, these aren't covered by streamers. This was like a no promotion period. You'll notice these games that have the magic, they get thousands and thousands of visits. Everybody else that doesn't quite have the magic, it's not much, you don't get much traffic. Steam knows when you have something there and they just send you a ton of traffic. Look at these games. Look at how much more traffic these exciting games have than everybody else. It, it's the magic, I can't explain it. And so what I've done is I've collected enough data that I've started to form what I call benchmarks. And so I can kind of see these games that are kind of just haven't hit it yet, zero to 40 wish lists per week. The games that have the magic, I call them diamond tier, 300 to a 3000 wish list per week. They just get so much traffic. This is how they get up to 100,000 wish lists by launch. This is how it's week by week. No, they're not even doing anything. Their game just exists and it gets 100 to 700 wish lists. That's what I call gold tier. It's like just below diamond, but man, these top two. If you get a game into these type of things, notice they overlap. This isn't a typo. It's sometimes games, they're based on revenue. So sometimes games get like a ton of weekly traffic, but they don't quite convert as well. But still, if you're gold or diamond, whew, you're in the right spot. This is the magic, okay? That's what I mean by the magic. Typically, Steam traffic comes from these. Search suggestions, discovery queue, more like this, and direct navigation. This is what I mean, you can't game these. Search suggestions comes from YouTube. So when YouTuber covers you, a lot of people will search on Steam. Ooh, what was that game that YouTuber was playing? That's why search suggestions is so big. All four of these, you can't game these. There's not like one weird trick. It's just when you have a really exciting game, Steam promotes you and streamers play you, and then you get traffic. This is where the traffic comes from. But that only comes when you have a really awesome game. And this is another thing. This is a very crude graph that I drew to kind of explain it. This is one of the reasons why I say get YouTubers to play your demo nice and early. Because if when a YouTuber plays your game, YouTube has a very long tail of visibility. It's just the way the YouTube algorithm works. So if you only give it to YouTubers right before launch, here's two scenarios. Like you only give the demo out just before you launch or scenario B is you pull your demo in nice and early and you give it out to streamers way before you're ready to launch. You'll notice in scenario A, when you only give it to streamers right at the end of your game's thing, you were flat for a very long period of time. And then you reached out to streamers and you gave it. But look, that tail is fat, but it's after you launch. That doesn't do you much good. These games that show their demo, like Dome Keeper, that give out their demo nice and early, they pulled it out back very far, right? So they got that initial streamer traffic, and then you'll notice the tail is fatter. Steam picks up on that all these YouTubers were sending traffic to your page and Steam will match that. And so you get this much fatter tail of collecting wish lists for a very long time while you're still building your game, while you're still making it. And then you launch and you do more streamer outreach. And so you get into the second bump. Notice the difference. Like that's why the strategy is to move the streamer outreach back to very early in development. So you get this nice fat tail from YouTube. Okay, that's why you got to get your demo out nice and early. Okay, so we've talked about continued growth, which is just market your game for a while, get that demo out, share it early so that Steam reacts. Now we get to the curated exposure. This is a cool trick, but only after you've gone viral. Let me show you. Curated exposure is stuff like IGN. Their YouTube page is huge. If you can get them to feature your trailer, you get tons of traffic. It is amazing, but they only accept certain games. This is curated. You have to email somebody at IGN and say, hey, would you like to host my trailer? And they might go, yeah, your game looks good. We'll host it. Or they'll be like, get out of here, kid. Your game looks like junk. That's, that's what I mean by curated. But you want to get on this page. This is awesome. Thousands. Look at how many views these get. Hundreds of thousands of views these games on IGN. Another one's like the PC Gamer Show. They have ho every June, I think it's June, May time period, they host the PC Gamer Show. And what do they do? They just play your games by these like famous hosts and they're like, look at this game. And then they show you trailer and it's awesome. And you get so many wish lists from something like this, but that's curated. You send them your game and they're like, this game looks cool. I like it. I'll put it on the show. But the way you get it is by what I call trading up for visibility. Okay. So I'm going to show you a specific example of how to get covered by IGN. Okay. So here's a game. It's called Paranormal Tales. It's pretty new. It's not released yet, still in production. 
Okay, it's a it's it's beautiful. It's a horror game, which Steam likes, and it looks really good. And it's basically like you're wandering through a spooky house. Not complicated. You're just walking through a spooky house. They tweeted about it, had this really creepy gameplay where this like monster girl runs upside down at you. It's creepy. Thousands of likes. Look at that. Look at how many likes it got retweets. This game has the magic. Okay. Step one, they got the magic. So they went viral on Twitter with just this like few second trailer. It's just so creepy, right? Got a lot of traffic from that. What the developer of this did, this guy's really smart. He reached out to IGN. When they went viral, he immediately emailed IGN and he said, um, this tweet is going viral. This is the actual text. This is the actual email, but I just copy the text so it's easier for you all to read. It says, it's unexpectedly going viral. It's only been a few hours and we already have 30,000 likes on Twitter. If this is something IGN would be interested in posting on YouTube or socials, you have my full permission to edit and use this video. Here's a link to the trailer. And then he just sent a video to IGN and IGN was like, oh, this is going viral. We're definitely gonna post this because here's the thing. Even the people at IGN don't know what is a good trailer. They don't. You have to have social proof to show that this is going to go viral. So when the guy's tweet went viral, that is proof to IGN to say our game is got the magic. You know how I say it's impossible to know whether the game has the magic. You just have to put it out there and it either does or doesn't. This game had the magic and they were like, here's proof that it has the magic. And IGN was like, oh, this game has the magic. We're going to put it up on our YouTube channel. That is how you trade up that visibility, okay? Then it went up on YouTube. It went on the IGN official channel, hundreds of thousands of views on this thing. This, that's how you trade up. And then, extra smart, he didn't just stop there. He then turned around and sent another email. He emailed Kotaku, Game Informer, Game Radar, uh, Gaming Bible. He just basically said, we got covered on IGN. Would you like to get covered? And they're like, oh, IGN covered it? That must mean they have the magic. We want a piece of that. And they then posted that trailer and wrote articles about it. So you see, he traded up the visibility and he kept saying, this game's getting covered here and here and up and up and up and went. That's the secret. So basically he said, he first had that viral tweet, then he got IGN coverage, and then he got PC Gamer coverage. See how he keeps trading up the visibility. The first thing, viral tweet. You got your game has had the magic first. That's the, that's the first rung of the ladder. All right. So we just talked about curated exposure. This is like the IGNs. They say, yes, your game has the magic. We will host you on our awesome platform. The next step in the ladder is Steam featuring. Okay. This is a widget that nobody really talks about, but it's secretly the most important thing. It's called the discovery queue. Most people don't do it, but enough people do it on Steam. It's this little widget on Steam. You can see it. Just go on your Steam account. There's a little thing called discovery queue. Okay, when a game goes big, 20% of all their traffic comes from the silly little widget in the middle of Steam. It is like secretly the most important thing on Steam. Okay, now Steam only gives you that if your game has the magic. And what happens is they see a bunch of traffic from other sources like a streamer, or if you go viral on Twitter or TikTok, and it's like, what? Why is all this traffic coming from? We're gonna match it. And they start boosting you. Here's a game I consulted for. Um, they got covered by streamers in J January. And this is graphing how much discovery queue traffic they got. And so what we saw was when they got covered by streamers, the discovery queue kicked in and matched all that traffic. It doubled their traffic just from the discovery queue. They got more streamer coverage just before they launched. Discovery queue from Steam was like, yep, here's some more coverage. And then when they launched, they had so many wish lists, so much traffic. Steam was like, boom. And they just gave them all the Discovery Queue traffic in the world. Most of their sales came from Discovery Queue. But this only happens when you get a bunch of traffic from outside. And as we know, to get it traffic from outside, you have to have a magic game. It has to get covered by streamers. And bop, 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 bop. that's how you get this. It's a ladder. It's a ladder. Other widgets that Steam has, they don't work as well as Discovery Queue, but they're very important. This widget at the bottom called More Like This and this one called Similar Games. Lots of traffic comes to those, but Steam only puts your game in here. Notice how big these games are. These are big name games. Steam only puts your game in there if you've got a lot of traffic, if you have a lot of traffic coming to your Steam page. And so that brings us to Steam Next Fest. Remember how I said to get into this thing? 
you have to have a lot of wish lists. We all know how to get wish lists now. You have to have that initial spark, trade up for visibility, and then just stay on Steam with that heightened visibility for a long time. And eventually you're going to hit that 100,000. And then you opt into Steam Next Fest when you've got hundreds of thousands of wish lists and bada boom, right there, you're on the front page of Steam. You did it. Congratulations, you're now on the front page of Steam. Now, once you've gotten all that Steam visibility that we talked about, it's time to launch. When you launch, you have enough wish lists and you sell enough in a short period of time, Steam puts you on this new and trending list. And you get so much visibility and money from this widget on front. So basically wish lists turn into sales, turn into Steam featuring. That's how it goes. That's what it works. So you got a good launch. Now we get to the thing, Steam curation. I love this part. Okay, people always say, I wish Steam was curated. It would be so good if Steam was curated. Here's a secret, Steam's curated. It is, Steam is actually curated. But you first have to prove that you got the magic. If your game doesn't have the magic, they're not gonna curate you. They automatically curated you out. Let me show you. When you sell at least 300,000, they're about, this isn't an official thing. This is, this is like that soft math. In you sell about this amount, you can call up Steam. Somebody who works at Valve and say, we, uh, we'd like to do a daily deal. And they, look, they, say, they always say, uh, let's just check to see if you'd be a good fit. And they turn around and they look at your sales numbers and they see to see if you've got about 300,000, somewhere about there, it's not official, it's curated. And they're like, oh, you have made 300,000. We'll give you one. And they curate, they do, they curate you. They put you in these little daily deals. Steam is curated. Everybody complains that Steam, they wish Steam was curated. It is. It's the daily deal. This gives you hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can usually do two per year if you're cool, if they're curating you and they will opt you into these things and you do that. This is the secret to sustainable game development. That's how you make the money on Steam. That's really how you do it. Okay, so let's just kind of wrap this up a little bit. There's this game we play in the US. Some people, I've actually never played it, but I hear a lot of people do. It's called Bigger and Better. And there's this, um, there's this famous uh, TED talk, you can search it. It's called like Red Paper Clip to a House. And this guy, it's a story of this guy, here, here he is. He was able to take a paper clip and just by making some clever trades, he ended up trading in for a house. He got a house for a red paper clip. <laughs> like what? For free, he didn't pay any money for this. He just had a red paper clip. How did they do that? It's called Bigger and Better. And this whole talk, if you watch this talk, it's pretty good. He just traded a paperclip for a cool pen, a pen for a weird doorknob, a doorknob for a furnace, for a little cooking stove, a cooking stove for a generator. Then he turned it into a little sign and a beer keg full of beer, which he turned into a truck, which he traded in for a house. That's what he did. Like every trade was just a little bit better, little bit better. And by keep massing up these increases, he ended up with a house. And this is a perfect example of how you reach that top tier of Steam, right? Basically, what you're doing is your game has zero wish lists, but you have this good game. And so, what you do is you get that viral tweet, which gets you 4,000 wish lists, which is not, it's not going to get you a million dollars, but it's a start. And then you trade that for visibility on IGN because they're like, oh, you got 4,000, which that means you're hot. You've got the magic. We'll host your trailer, which can get you like 40,000 wish lists sometimes. And then it gets you all this visibility. Steam now saw that your IGN trailer is bringing in tons of traffic. So Steam's like, give this game more traffic. And so then you just sit on it and every day Steam is sending you tons of traffic and you just let that build up to 50,000. And then you trade that up to get into PC Gaming Show, which gets you 100,000. And now you're up there, you are launching at Steam Next Fest with 160,000 wish lists. They put you on the front page, then you get all the visibility. This is how you get here. This is what I was talking about by that slow growth. And all of a sudden you're at the top and everybody's like, where'd this game come from? It started way back here. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. Now, if your game is not like, you know, super beautiful, like I said, you don't have to just be a pretty game. It's one of these games where it's like playing is believing, you know, where I said it's got addicting gameplay, it's infinitely deep, or it's serving an underserved audience. You might tweet about this game and it gets nowhere. You know, that happens all the time. 
secretly, most games don't do well on Twitter. They just don't. But you get a hundred wish lists. You're like, oh God, this sucks. But you put your demo out, which is super fun. And you get a thousand wish lists by your fun demo going out. And then you send it to streamers. And every streamer is like, holy moly, this game's fun. I'm going to play it every week on my stream, which just gets you so many wish lists. Domekeeper got 40,000 wish lists in a month because of all their streamer coverage, playing a demo that is super fun. And it just builds. And then you just let it ride on Steam. You just say like, all right, Steam now knows we have a good game. It's sending us all this traffic. You get natural visibility up to your 100,000. Then you enter Steam Next Fest with your game that has 100,000. And you get that bonus wish list because you're on the front page of Steam Next Fest. You see, you see how it's like a very small step here, this zero to 1,000. But once you had this thing, you, there's a slow path up. This is the ladder of Steam visibility. And that's it. That's my talk. Like I said, I give a free book away and my weekly mailing list is uh, howtomarketagame.com slash free. Um, this is my contact information. If you want to contact me, Twitter account, there's that. Um, I also do a class. I have this whole class. It's online. It's self-paced. You just watch it. Um, I'm going to give it, look, I made a, a special, just because you watched my thing, um, the El, just for Elgin, uh, I'll, I'll knock half the price. I'll just throw, throw it for half the price. You just go to howtomarketagame.com slash courses. This is the course. Just enter this coupon. When you're checking out, there's this little coupon code. You just type in Elgin. That's all you type, Elgin. I'm only going to do it, keep it up until Friday because it's like, once it kind of hits YouTube, who knows what kind of weirdos. I'm only doing this for Elgin though. So that's it. That's a talk. I'm here for questions. Um, I hope that worked. Um, that's it. Ask away. Thank you so much for having me.